I'm excited today. Hey, I'm Chef Carlos Brown. We're getting ready to get down with some really good, fantastic food. You know, the Gullah culture. You know how we do it in the Gullah culture? All the Geechees, hello. So what we want to do today is put together a couple of really cool meals here. So I'm going to do some appetizers. Um, I'm going to start out with some great vegetable because there's some veg vegetarians out there. Hello, vegetarian. So everybody know this is a butternut squash. We want to get started with some butternut squash. I'm going to make it a little sexy though. So I'm going to change it up a little bit with you. Uh, did I say sexy? Yeah, I did say it. So we're going to make it really cool for you. So I'm going to do some butternut squash. I'm going to saute it real good. I got some great herbs here ready to get started. I'm going to put a twist on this butternut squash, okay? So first I want to do is start with my almond. Let's get some olive oil going inside here real good. We want to make sure this pan is nice. Olive, I use olive oil because, you know, versus butter. I like the freshness of oil and olive oil, so we take away all that other, you know, all the other calories that we put on. So we're gonna make it a little fresh. So then, when I get vegetarians in place, they're loving this stuff. So I'm gonna make sure that you get something really, really cool today. So I'm gonna start with this butternut squash. I'm gonna get my pan nice and sizzled. I'm gonna get some heat to it because we're gonna make sure that you get this thing going. Oh, there's a little white wine in there, a little Chardonnay. My pan get hot, come on pan, get hot for me as he's getting hot. Are uh, you here going? I'm gonna do a little garlic in there first. It's good, cause I like the smell of garlic, real, real fresh. I like that freshness, so I'm gonna go with that. Uh, let's do it with some, some mixed onion here. I got some scallops and onions. Oops, oh, you gotta watch out, you don't wanna be burning yourself now. Got a pan to get hot on you and a hot beat. So, I'm, I'm going to caramelize this onion with a little brown sugar, a little herb. So I'm, it's sort of like a savory type deal. Let's start out with that. And I'm going to, here's my twist. Got some almonds, okay? So I'm going to take some almonds and dash it in here as well. So the almonds going to be dashed along with this, uh, this great onions and pepper. Kind of shake it up a little bit. Just kind of get, get a little sear going there. Let me turn my fire down. I don't want it too hot. So on the butternut squash, you always want to add like some fresh herbs. So I'm gonna get a little herb going in there. Y'all see how that looks? Looks very good. Very, very, here we go, here we go. Now, here's the thing about the Gullah culture. Gullah, we're not really sitting down trying to figure out uh, or read a book on, on recipes. We cook from our heart. So my heart is doing the cooking right now. So what I'm creating right now, you probably never seen anywhere else. And you'll only get it from the Gullah culture because we do it our way. I'm gonna add a little brown sugar to it just to kind of give that almond a little sweet taste there. That sweet, savory, looks really good, don't it? That smell is phenomenal. So you want to get that smell going. I want to grab me, a, I'm gonna grab my little spatula here, so I'm gonna keep it all in the middle. It's very important that when you cook, to keep an even flow on what you're doing, you keep it all in the middle, all right? So then that's tossed up really good. I want that olive oil. I'm going to add a little honey to it, just to get a little sweet taste there. So. As that roasts down, just really nice there, nice and toasty, good flavor. I'm gonna start cutting my butternut. I'm gonna turn it down a little more. I want it to just sizzle a little bit because I want the butternut to get in there and kind of work with it. So this is a big old boy here, isn't it? Oh, you know what that means? I gotta get the big boy for the big boys, okay? So I take the big boy on, and I'm gonna slice him down real good. Man, this looks so pretty. This, this is going to be very unique. You're going to like this right here. Perfect, perfect cut there. And I just kind of just, just kind of work it down. Nothing, nothing special about it. And I know it's kind of tough, a little hard there. Uh, one of the things that I, I find that I do, I kind of clean that up real good. This could be a, a really good meal if you're a vegetarian. Kind of do this with some squash. Maybe some uh, zucchini or uh, eggplant. All that's perfect. So I'm gonna finish this off real quick and then I'm gonna get this boy in the pan too. And it's still sizzling. The almond is smelling really good. I'm also gonna add, guys, just a little bit. Uh, I have an extract here. It's a, a pistachio. So I wanna add that to the almond just to kind of give it a little flavor there. So now you got a little pistachio going in here. I want to. Toss a little more brown sugar on that real good because I want this to really be caramelized here. And I'm going to take here, I'm going to touch it up real good. Okay, let's get a little, there you go. I'm going to flame it up real good. This is, toast it up real nice, guys. 
Yeah. Okay. So that's nice and toasty. That's what we want. I'm keeping this down on low because I want to go ahead and start adding this to it. This guy got some big old seeds in there. You notice the seeds inside there? I just cut around it. I just made it really simple for myself. I don't try to, and because I, I don't want to give them like mush. You don't want it to be mushy. You want it to be like really, you want to get the flavor of the butternut squash. So you want to just get that seed from around there real good. Clean it out. I want to keep it large. I don't want it to be like, because it's, remember, it's a meal. So because it's a whole meal, you don't want it to be small. And then I don't want mushy potatoes type squash. You want the, you want the flavor, all right? So I'm going to toss that in there, guys. Just to kind of give it, uh, give it some chunks there. I'm going to master this part off real quick. Hold this right here. Let's cut these boys down. This is a beautiful piece of butternut squash, and it's not hard, so you know it's, it's really been taken care of very well. And uh, sometime I uh, I may do. Um, I may take the, the butternut squash and kind of boil them a little bit just to kind of soften them up. But these right here is not even having that problem. So it's pretty good. It's going right in, kind of nice little chunks there, almost like a whole meal. I think it's beautiful, man. I love it. This is this going to give you something that you can do at home, and it won't take long to do it. I promise you. Here we go. So now as I put that in there, I'm going to add a little more olive oil to it because I want to now oil this guy up. Man, that almond smells so good, and that's pistachio. I don't know if you got, if you can smell it out there, I know you can smell it. <laughs> so how can I smell it, chef? You can smell it, I'm telling you. I'm adding a little more herb to it. The herbs I'm using is uh, cilantro's, some thymes in there, and a little parsley, just to kind of get that flavor going. You can hear that sizzle going for me real quick. And I want to wrap that up together. So then I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to add a little rosemary to it. Because I also want it to be a little spicy. So I didn't add, you know that I didn't add any honey to it yet because I don't want that part in there. I want it to get the flavor to get in there. Now you can toss as much herbs as you want inside there. But I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to it. Just a little salt and pepper. And I'm going to add a little more dry thyme. And that garlic flavor is all over this room. Oh my God. So I do a little, I do my own herbs. So if you notice, I got like a little, I cut a little special herbs I put together. I don't really like the traditional, just kind of pour it in there. I take my herb, take my time and cut them, add them together and come up with my own flavor. It's still looking nice. So what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to let this right here just kind of cook down a little bit. Then I'm going to add it to the oven, put it in the oven for a couple of minutes and let the oven just do its work. And I'm telling you, it is fabulous. There's one more thing I want, I like to put on this right here that you can try. Put some dried cranberries. So if you got some dried cranberries, you want to add that to it as well. And I'm telling you, you got a full meal. So give me a moment. Let me get this in the oven real good. Let it slow roast. You will be ready to roll in a few minutes. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this meal. I got the oven set at 350. Roast it really slow. Because I wanted that to go in first because that's going to take the longest because I didn't boil it. I'm just going to roast it off because I want that, I want that flavor to stick. Okay, now that we got this butternut uh, squash going inside the oven, it is smelling so good in this kitchen, we're going to start on the potatoes, okay? First thing we're gonna do is wash the potatoes. This is gonna be really unique. You're gonna like these potatoes. Remember, the, the, the punchline is the seafood, the salmon. You gotta try the salmon. Okay, there we go. So, now that I got this washed up nice and clean, these babies, look at these little cuties here. You know, I like the little baby dog. Little mixture here, a little tri-color going. I'm gonna kind of add it to the hot water. And this water is, is uh, garlic. It's a little bit of garlic for sure. There's a little bit of olive oil in there and salt. There is no seasoning yet because I want to kind of get it soft. But then with the potatoes, what you don't want to do is start putting that in the oven real hard because I want to serve these whole. So some people tend to cut them in half. I like, you know, both ways, but today I want to do them whole because I want to make it a special meal, okay? So then I'm going to drop these babies in here, get them nice and soft. And I'm using my strainer because what I don't want to do is add a whole bunch of water to it. It just makes it uh, easier to do it this way because I want 
what happens when you start adding water to it, you change the temperature. So I don't want to change the temperature. It's already at a boil. It's where I need it to be. I'm going to sit them in here. And if you notice, it's straining right back out. And it already, you can, it's, it's already got a little olive oil on it already anyway. So it's pretty much in its boil stages. This is going to be fabulous. I just can't really, I can't wait to get to that salmon, man. I got, I got a salmon treat for y'all today. I promise you. I promise you this salmon is going to knock you off your feet. This is starting to boil real nice. With the gullet side, I'm going to switch this up. I'm going to do this with little Cajun potatoes. I think I'm going to add a little Cajun spice to it. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. So I'll make this a little Cajun spice to go because the gullet sauce is a little sweet, savior. It got a little spice to it anyway. It'll go perfect with the potatoes. Okay, now that the potatoes are all done and ready to go, I'm going to sift it right out of here. I'm just going to barely roast this off because it's pretty much cooked. You want to kind of keep them a dente. You don't want it to go, you don't want it soft. You don't want mashed potatoes, of course. You want the potatoes to be perfect. And so this is what I got here. And remember I told you what I was going to do next with these potatoes? Y'all remember I said I was going to do Cajun. So if you think about it, New Orleans, or New Orleans, you know, is the place, a lot of Cajun spices. Well, Charleston also has that spice going too. So the low country, New Orleans, we all kind of got that little spice. So I'm gonna, before I put the season on here, I'm gonna do a little more of this oil on it because I don't want it to, to uh, stick to the pan. I want it to come right off. Man, that's, that's beautiful. And that smell is phenomenal already. And so it's, it's gonna be really good. You wanna make sure that it's, Perfected. That, that looks really good. I gotta say it for myself. Now I'm take a little garlic. Now, here's what I'm doing with the garlic. Now I'm not going to, I'm just going to just kind of just bang it on there. Come, now I'm having fun. Remember, food is fun. So you want to make sure you have fun with it and you're not like trying to be so, you know, um, particular. Sometimes people get like, oh, I want to do this right here. No, not me. I want to, I want to make sure it's fun. So I dash in different things. Remember, I had these onions and these uh, all these scallions kind of cut up the first time. Well, I'm not gonna let them go to waste. I don't want to waste food. So what I'm gonna do with it? I'm gonna use them on these potatoes. So now my potatoes are getting a whole nother flavor. Got some fresh herbs. And then I did here. I love my little rosemary. Okay, so we're into the garden. Grab some rosemary leaves. Just gonna kind of pull these off of here. You know, you don't you don't have to rush it. Just kind of just pull it off. Get, Cause oh my God, the flavor of the rosemary, the smell of the rosemary. I love rosemary, rosemary and herb, any kind of herbs in my specialty. So most of my cooking comes with fresh herbs, and I love them all the time. So there's that on here. Kind of get a little of that going. I'm gonna add a little salt, a little pepper to it. There we go. Just a little salt, pepper. Just about ready to hit the oven, and I'm gonna roast it for about, maybe about. I think it'll probably take about maybe 10, 10 to 12 minutes. It's, not, it's just about ready to roll. I want to get a little brown, caramelized flavor on, on top of the, a color. I want to change the color a little bit. So here's another little trick. So remember I told you about the Cajun, okay? Here's my little Cajun spice. Wow, look at that. Oh, my God. Fabulous. Woo-wee. I can eat these right now. Right now, really, I'm serious. It's already ready to go. So I, I'm just kind of just going through the motion, but it's really ready to go. Whoop, there's my spice there, and here's a little trick to it. So some of you may like a little truffle Oreo, so I switched up on the oil on you. Got a little truffle, how about a little truffle? You don't want too much of the truffle oil going, just a little bit, okay? So before I bake this in the oven, right, I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna toss it up a little bit. So I got a little truffle oil, little red peppers, I am going to take it and transfer it out of the baking pan into my bowl, all right? Because what I want to do is make sure that I get it covered all the way around, all right? You don't want to beat them up, so you want to toss it around real good. So now it's tossed in the oil, it's all level. See, it's great level. That's what I want. I want to get a good, I want to get it all even, evenly together. So then when I put it back on the pan, everything is good to go. I always make sure I can smell everything before I even put it in the oven, so I get that smell right away. This few right here can sit right here. I'm gonna put it back on the pan, guys. Right back on the pan, because now it's time for him to hit the oven. Somebody say the oven. I'm going back to the oven. This that taster right here I was telling you about. 
Ah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Perfect. Mm. Mm. Delicious, delicious. I'm going over to the oven and pull this butternut squash out, plate it right in front of you. Guys, I want you to check this out real quick. Okay, let me go grab this. Oh my God. Man, that's beautiful, guys. Look at that butternut squash. Coming out of here, it is ready. So, uh, let me just kind of dig into it. Okay, all right. Okay, that's it right there, I'm telling you. I can taste the cranberries in it, the almonds in it. It's like everything comes together. So now, each flavor rolled off my tongue is so delicious. One thing about chefs, we don't sit down and have dinner because we just ate it all sitting here, right? There you go again. My God, it is so good. We'll pull the potatoes, kind of let it rest. While that's resting, we're gonna start cutting that salmon. So let's start seasoning. First, before I season it, I wanna make sure my pan's already hot. So I got my fire going really, the pot is ready. Again, I am doing this with olive oil in the pan. So that's already ready, seasoned, ready to go. I take a lemon and squeeze it over my salmon because I don't want a fishy taste. I want it to be just perfect. And then before I put my season on it, I want to make sure that I got all this cleaned off really well. This is looking good. I go with a little garlic, you know, just a little garlic. It won't hurt. I guess you said, this man, love garlic, I sure do. A little garlic there on there, just a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of white wine to it. Again, and here's what white wine does to your food, guys. White wine, it's like, if you ever cut your, it has alcohol, right? So if you ever cut yourself with a knife or whatever, and if you put alcohol on it, what does it do? It burns, right? So this right here does the same thing. When this alcohol hits this, it opens up the pores, and the pores opens up. So now I can take my spices. Uh huh. I had y'all ain't know I had something behind it. I take my little spice now. This is a little Cajun spice, and I begin to season that because now I want that season to go down where it's open. So the pores is already open, and I want the season to get in there, get in there, get in there really good. And because I am doing this with uh, the uh, the gullet sauce and there's gonna be a sauce on it, I don't wanna over season. So you just kinda of just sprinkle it down the middle, kinda of getting it going, cause sometimes we can, you know, we get a little too much going. I don't wanna do that. I wanna make sure it's seasoned perfection. So I'm gonna flip it on both sides. And I want this to hit, stay on this board for a minute because that board is gonna hold that season, hold that flavor into it. And I'm gonna put a little of the same season on the back side of it. And then when I'm finished seasoning, the first thing I wanna do is start putting in this nice, hot skillet. I have a non-stick skillet, so you're gonna need that. And then the other thing you wanna get, guys, purchase yourself a, what they call a fish a fish spatula. So the fish spatula is really easy. You can pick up and turn it. It's not tearing your fish up. So something good to have. So now I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna, the right side of this fish, which is the, the, the outer side, is what I wanna take and turn down first, okay? I want to hear that season, hear that sizzle in that pan. The pan is already ready. I do not want to cook the salmon in this pan. I'm just searing it off. So after searing it, then we're going to go to the oven to finish it off. So the oven will finish it off. The pan will just sear it, give it a nice coat on the top of it. Land it in there really nice. And there we go. There goes my salmon. Real simple. And while the salmon is going, I'm going to do the same thing with the shrimp. I'm going to season the shrimp because the shrimp is going on the salmon. Did I tell you all that's a little trick? That's the trick. So I'm, the sauce that I'm going to do is going to also have the salmon in it. I do a wonderful beurre blanc sauce. Beurre blanc means white. It's white wine. So we're going to use that to make the sauce, the shrimp sauce, to go on top of the salmon to kind of finish it off. But the gullet sauce is going to be the kicker. All right, so we're gonna put that on in a few minutes. The garlic sauce is a secret. I'm gonna make sure this is turned up a little more. Turn that pan on a little high so I can get, the, get it going because I don't want it to cook hard. We'll get ready to put it in this oven. 
my garnish is ready, and I'm going to garnish it. Again, this is not dishes that's going to take forever. These are, once, they get, once they put it in this plate, because we want to make the salmon medium. Uh, some people like their, their fish cooked well done. Well done takes away all your flavor, okay? The, the, I'm not stopping you from doing that way. I'm just saying the best way, my recommendation as a chef, is for you to do it with uh, just doing it medium, medium well, then stick it in the oven, let it finish off, and then voila. I want, I want it to be golden. I don't want it just to be like seared lightly. I want it seared where it's kind of golden brown on top. So I'm doing one flip only. So sometimes people flip their fish four or five times. Now you start to kind of tear it up. You don't want to do that. You want to get a good sear going on one side, maybe three minutes or so, and then flip it over. Once you flip it the next time, put it on your pan. It goes in the oven. And, and I recommend a sheet pan. I'm doing a, I have a little pizza insert pan I use. Kind of just keep that a little bit just to make sure I get getting a good flair to it. I want, it's already starting to, to, to really look good already. But you want to make sure. I love salmon, man. I love any kind of fish, to be honest with you, but I love salmon. Um, I'm a sea bass, flounder type guy. Now you, you can start, kind of see it now. It's starting to get a little golden brown. And you notice I'm flipping it over. And once I flip it once, I will not flip it again. I'll just put it I'll just put it straight in the oven. It'll finish the chop off. And if you notice how easy it is for me to just kind of take this fish spatula and just toss it over, I'm not tearing it up at all. Okay? Look good. Looking really good. Beautiful. Beautiful piece of salmon. I don't want to cook all the way. I'm going to start snatching it off. One down. Two potatoes. Three potatoes. Looking good. For all you fish eaters out there. Oh, don't get away from me. Come on back here. There we go. Because we don't want the fish to overcook. All right? So we want to take it off. Nice, nice coloring. Beautiful fish. Let's get this. Go ahead and turn it off. And that is ready to go. So now I got the salmon is done. I'm going to take it straight to the oven. I want, I'm, the oven is already set on 350. I want to make sure that it's on 350 so the temperature is nice and warm. Again, I want to cook this medium. I don't want to go too hard on it because I still have to take it out, sauce it up, put a little extra twist to it, a little Chef Carlos twist to it. This meal is fabulous and it's coming together great. I know that I told y'all I had a little secret on the side to go with the salmon and guess what? I found some shrimp. Ooh. We from Carolina, we get these shrimp from the water. Oh yeah, mm. man, that's very good, very good. Put a little crushed pepper inside there. Again, because I'm waiting on the salmon, I don't want to overcook this. I'm gonna twist it on you guys. Here's a little sauce to go with it. So I add a little heavy cream to it. Ah just to kind of make my own little sauce. The heavy cream comes to pull it together. So it now becomes like an etouffee uh, or some type of Cajun sauce because I've added cilantros, I've added thymes, a little rosemary, some crushed peppers. I've also added the, um, the heavy cream, the white wine, kind of give it a white wine sauce. So it's like a bourbon blanc sauce. And just kind of let it just cook down itself. I don't want to do anything else to it. It has the garlic in it, it's ready. It already so it's really really good so I don't want this to overcook I want the sauce to cook along with the shrimp so the flavor is now in the sauce oh, 
I have a little seafood base that I use. It's a paste. So if you get the seafood paste, that'll kind of really kind of take it over the top. I want to get a little more tighter, okay? Because so the, what this is going to do, because it's heavy whipping cream, it's going to tighten itself up some more. And I don't want it to go too much. So I'm going to taste the sauce. Oh, my God. Awesome. The sauce is awesome. So now, I want to pull our heat down a little bit because we don't want it to cook overcook. I know you're asking, where's the greenery? I didn't forget about you. I have the spinach. I'm going to saute some spinach as soon as I get the salmon back in the oven. So I'll take the spinach and this meal is complete. Now, guys, the salmon is getting ready to get glazed real quick. I'm going to glaze it up with the very own Gullah sauce. The Gullah sauce is, hey, you got to get that. Got a little cute little picture on the side, too. Well, not really cute. Handsome. All right? Got a good little handsome picture on, this, on, the, on the side of Chef Carlos. This is my very own sauce. You have to try this sauce. I'm going to glaze it with this Gullah sauce. This can be used on chicken, beef, and vegetables, so good for vegetarians as well. So get yourself some Bella sauce here. I'm gonna take a little bit here, I got it ready to go. I got a little brush. And and the reason why I'm brushing, guys, because sometimes we just start pouring stuff all over. We wanna take your time and just brush it on there. Again, remember, this is the art, so we just kinda paint it on there. Man, look at that, look at that. It's already looking good already. And I wanna get it to caramelize and just kinda just glaze on there real nice back in the oven. Just, just for a couple of minutes. That's all I'm doing. Just give them a few more minutes in there, get a good glaze to it, and then we're set to go. Each one has got a little gut of sauce on it. You can already see the coloration of it changing, but the sauce, the smell is phenomenal. This sauce, guys, is a little, has a little spice kick to it, but it's a sweet, spicy sauce, but it's not burning your mouth. So it's not unbearable you know this is something that you're going to enjoy and you're going to enjoy, enjoy it on everything now here's my kicker this is my twist i'm putting a twist on it guys anybody not do the twist is that, is that the twist that's not the twist similar to the twist whatever anyway i got a little blue cheese right so i do i take a little fresh blue cheese and i decide i want i always want to be different you know i tell you the gullah culture we just cook with our heart, and we're thinking about, we're not thinking about what we're doing, we decided to be art, be artists. So I'm gonna spread a little blue cheese on this because I think it'll go well with this salmon. And those of you that don't like blue cheese, if you try it on the salmon, you're gonna change your thoughts, okay? So I'm gonna put a little blue cheese on it. I know it's not the, the normal, I'm not the normal guy, I'm not the normal chef. I'm just the guy that create art. Food should be art. And it should always be an experience. I call it an encounter. You always want to encounter. You want a different encounter every time. Sometimes you, if you do the same thing every time, it gets boring. All right? So we don't want to do boring stuff. That is ready to go. I think I will add a little more sauce. I'm going to let it drip this time. Drip. Come on. There you go. Drip. Okay. Well, I'll let it drip this way. I'll just drip it on there. Drip. Just a little drip, because I want to get a little bit of the sauce into the blue cheese as well. So now you get a whole nother flavor going here. That's beautiful. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is put it back in the oven. I'm going to give it like a, probably, a, I'll say two minutes. Two minutes to get nice and tight on top of the salmon, and you're not going to believe your eyes once it come out of there. Okay, guys, now we're at the final presentation. I'm gonna plate this, this, uh, this wonderful cuisine that I prepared for you this evening. Uh, one thing I want you to know that this, this plating, this food is from the Gullah culture. So the Gullah culture, you gotta remember, Gullah was a dialect. It's, it was the way people sp speak. And, it, and they spoke those languages to kind of communicate with each other, to kind of uh, escape away from uh, what we call slavery. And so the Gullah culture, they did everything uh, in unique ways. They created food, they grow vegetables. And so today we want to kind of just do, you know, talk about the history. Because you heard me talk about Gullah a lot. And so now I want you to understand 
why I, why I speak, speak about it so strongly, because it's part of our history, it's our heritage, and the culture of Gullah, food is fun, and food should be an experience. There's a shrimp right there, there's the potatoes. Now, you remember the butternut squash? You remember that? Well, I got some more. So I just want to put just a little tad bit there. Oh my God, look at that, guys. On there, and then hit it with a little sauce. So that's good right there. Because the spinach is part of the vegetable, I also makes it part of my garnish. So now I'm gonna just pile it on top. Real nice there. Get some of this sauce again from this butternut squash. And just kind of just drizzle it around there real good. Man, that looks terrific. I'm gonna make it look pretty too with a little flower on, on the side. Gonna make it real sweet there. That way you can kind of, cause you know, you go places and you say, oh man, that, that plate looked good. Let me grab me a tasting spoon, and I'm going to get to tasting. <laughs> and I'm going to get me the one of these super duper spoons. Woo, here we go. So we're digging into it. Of course, the squash is good. The salmon is delicious. I'm going to go right into it. That's awesome. That's terrific. This plate really made me proud. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this fabulous presentation today. I'm Chef Carlos Brown. You can find me on Instagram, Chef Carlos Brown. Also check out my website, which is www.chefcarlosbrown.com and my YouTube page. Don't forget to get your gullah sauce, guys. Gullah sauce is available. You can also uh, go on the website and see the gullah sauce. Be glad to send it to you. And thank you again. I hope you enjoyed this moment. Remember, food that make your face smile. Chef Carlos Brown.